This video is sponsored by Miller Lite. What's up everyone? My name is Jossie and I hope you are having a nice day. For those who are new here, welcome to my channel. I typically drop YouTube videos once a week, ranging from tech education to travel and lifestyle videos. About a year ago, I did a what's on my iPhone video and I definitely have been asked to do another what's on my iPhone type of video. However, I thought it would be cool to do a what's on my Mac video so you can get some insight as to what I use for when I'm coding creating content and for productivity. The reason why I picked those three categories is because when I'm on the computer, outside of browsing the web, I spend a lot of my time editing videos, pictures, catching up on some emails, and as of recently, I've been doing more coding outside of my regular day job. With that being said, let's get into the content of this video and the actual apps I use on a day-to-day -day basis. In terms of content creation, I use Adobe suite of products, one of the most heavily used apps on my Mac is Premiere Pro. Premiere Pro is a powerful video editing application that allows me to basically create whatever style of video I want to. My typical process is one, I import my tracks. After importing, I group my clips. This makes editing go a lot faster since I typically group based on frame rate and location. After grouping, I drag and drop my clips in an order that I've already outlined. And after placing my clips into Premiere Pro, I import my music and then I start color grading. So that's my process with Premiere Pro. I know that was like a 10,000 foot view of what I actually do, but I could go on and on about Premiere and we just don't have time for all that. So on to the next one. I first wanna talk about Lightroom because I do most of my editing in there and I just touch up pictures with Photoshop. In Lightroom, the first thing I like to do is edit the lighting when I'm editing a picture. That means if my picture is underexposed or overexposed, I edit the exposure, highlight, shadows, and contrast primarily. If you follow me on Instagram, you'll notice that I like to have either a more orange or teal theme or orange and teal theme. However, I've started to either put more emphasis on the orange in my pictures and desaturate the blues or vice versa. Not to forget about the details such as clarity and vignetting to make the image look more dramatic. In terms of Photoshop, I really only do masking to touch up spots that may show dust or the occasional mark or stain. The last app I wanna talk about on the content creation side is Adobe Spark. And I'm gonna be honest, I don't think this app gets enough credit. I don't hear people talking about this app enough. I was first introduced to Spark when I was in school because it was free and an easy way to create newsletters that I needed to send out for an organization I had a leadership role in. I primarily use Spark to create my thumbnails. So after editing and touching up my pictures in Lightroom and Photoshop, I create collages and or add text to the images using Spark to give it more of a thumbnail feel. Spark is also a great tool for really any social media posts such as Instagram, Twitter, and so much more. The next few apps I wanna talk about fall under the productivity category. Since we are talking about productivity, I thought it'd be a perfect time to talk about how MailerLite has made email marketing easy. As a small business owner, professional blogger, or vlogger, email marketing is a very important aspect of our business. For those who aren't familiar with email marketing, in a broad sense, it is an act of sending a commercial message to a group of people. Email marketing can help college students, bloggers, designers, or any person in the creative industry because it allows you to create a personalized message or personalized messages, market your products and services, which will help you build impactful and meaningful relationships with your customers and supporters, which is why I'm happy to be sponsored by MailerLite. Since 2010, MailerLite have been giving businesses the opportunity to create simple yet powerful solutions to help build customer relationships along with helping their businesses grow. MailerLite is easy, intuitive, and easy to use if this kind of marketing and technology is new to you, but it also has advanced features for businesses that are trying to grow their brand. Not to mention some of my favorite features like their custom HTML editor so you don't have to be a programming whiz, landing pages so you don't have to be a designer whiz, and template newsletters. Grow your business with a mailer like today by signing up for free or purchasing a plan today. The first app on my Mac that I think of when it comes to productivity is mail for Gmail. As a YouTuber, I find myself using Gmail more than ever, talking with influencer agencies, brands, fans, and keeping track of newsletters from YouTube. I basically keep this app open all day, every day, because I work with brands from all over the world. So I do get the occasional 1.30, 2.30 a.m. email. If you are in the tech or business world, or you will be at some point, you'll probably get to know Zoom. 
Zoom is an easy to use, reliable platform for conference calls and videos. And that's basically a description of the app in a nutshell. For my regular job, I have at least one Zoom meeting a day. And when I'm not working from home, any meeting that I have that day will be through Zoom. All you have to do is schedule a meeting, send out some invites, and participants can either join via audio, video, through the app, or they can call in from their phones. I find this application very useful and makes conference calls a lot smoother because you can add as many people as you like, and there's a chat option for when there's a large group of participants. The next app, if you aren't living under a rock, you know what this app is, which is Spotify. So I'm just gonna assume that if you're watching this video, you don't live under a rock. In all seriousness, I like to use Spotify to create playlists based on what I'm doing. So I have a workout playlist, a playlist for when I'm coding, a Thursday night playlist, don't ask why. When I'm coding, I typically listen to lo-fi chill hip hop music because lyrics distract me from my work when it's complex. The next app I like to talk about is a pretty underrated app or <laughs> at least it's underrated to me and that's the cloud app. Cloud app is an application I recently started using because I got tired of using QuickTime to screen record. Cloud app allows me to seamlessly record my screen for when I'm doing videos like this. And when I select the screen record option, it gives me the opportunity to crop my screen to focus on the portion of the screen that I want people to look at. This saves me a lot of time in post-production and cloud app allows me to easily download and share the screen recordings or screenshots I've taken. Last but definitely not least, Logitech options. Since my main mouse is the MX Master 3 and my main keyboard is the MX Keys, I like to customize the buttons on the mouse for specific apps and sync up the two devices to the USB receiver. With this application, you can pair multiple devices to one receiver depending on how new your Logitech devices are. So as you can see, I have the Keys and Master 3 paired to the same receiver. Within the MX Master 3 dashboard, you can change settings to the mouse buttons and the point and scroll features. The main benefit I get from this app though is configuring the buttons to do different actions for different apps. For example, the left and right buttons in Chrome are used to toggle between screens, while the left and right buttons in Premiere are used to cut and play pause. That's just a simple example of what you can do with this application, but I find it very beneficial and it makes my productivity a lot more efficient. I don't do a ton of coding, or at least not as much as I like to, but when I do web programming, which is my favorite type of programming, I use Visual Code. It's a light version of Visual Studio. I personally like it more than Visual Studio because one, it works well with Mac, two, it has a better UI and is less intimidating. And it works well with Git and has a window for the terminal below the project files. For those who don't know, Visual Code and Visual Studio are IDEs, which are applications that allow you to program. So you could do design work, debugging, programming, the whole nine. When I'm coding in web, I primarily am coding in Angular, so being able to see my runtime errors without switching the screen or going to another application is beneficial. The next application that I found useful is Rested. Now Rested is an application that allows you to make simple API calls and to see if the call you're making sends back a response. This can save you a lot of time and headache when coding because let's say you're getting some errors in your web app, at least you already know your API call is working so you don't even have to do any API debugging. And the more complex your application is, the more complex debugging will be. So it's always good to abstract away as much as you can to prevent confusion, complexity, and overhead. I don't have this app on my Mac, but Postman is also another great application that works similar to Rested. The final application and IDE that I love and hate sometimes, you all know it if you have a Mac or are a developer who makes iOS applications, it is Xcode. Besides how slow Xcode can be, which is partly my fault for trying to use such a powerful tool on a 2015 MacBook Air, I definitely wouldn't recommend that. This is a great application that Mac offers to the developer community. With Xcode, you can create Mac, iPhone, iPad, Apple TV, and Apple Watch applications. It is the epitome of being able to create something out of nothing. Xcode's intuitive interface makes testing, debugging, designing, and coding a lot easier than most IDEs. Also, the nice thing about Xcode is that you have everything at your disposal, which makes creating apps less intimidating. 
So that's all I have to say about Xcode. I'm gonna let you investigate more about it if you haven't already. All right, everyone, that concludes this video. If you haven't already, subscribe to my channel for more content. I love for you all to become a part of the family. Like this video if you thought it was interesting or you found it helpful or if you just like the video. Also comment down below some of your favorite apps. They give you PC apps, iOS, Android. It doesn't have to be a specific operating system, just whatever apps help you be more productive, more creative, and that help with coding. And as always, have a blessed, wonderful rest of your week, and I'll see you all soon. Peace.